Feminists all across the country observed what they called Equal Pay Day this past week. Senator Hillary Clinton marked the occasion by reintroducing the Paycheck Fairness Act. It's legislation designed to force employers to pay women what they pay men. More than 40 years after Congress passed the Equal Pay Act, the debate is still raging. At the heart of it is a single, often repeated statistic, that women earn just 76 cents for every dollar that a man makes. The notion is so pervasive, so unchallenged, it's become a cultural given. Everyone knows it's true. But our first up guest argues that, no, it isn't true. Warren Farrell is a longtime feminist, the only man to be elected three times to the New York City Board of the National Organization for Women. He spent years protesting the wage gap between the sexes. But a new look at the numbers has changed his mind. His latest book is entitled, Why Men Earn More. Mr. Farrell, thanks a lot for joining oh, us. Oh, it's a pleasure. So, deconstruct the myth. Why isn't it true, the Labor Department statistic, that women earn just 76 cents on every man's dollar? Why is that not true? Well, because there's basically 25 things that are different between what men do in the workplace and what women do in the workplace. Every single one of those 25 things leads to men earning more money, but every single one of those 25 things leads to women having better lives. So um, here I have a 17 and 18 year old daughter. I'm saying to myself, you know, what do, do I want to help them earn more money, or do I want to help them earn a better life, um, have a better life? And I realize that what I want to help them do is make their own decisions about how much money, how much, you know, how many trade-offs do I make? So you're saying that when the Labor Department makes the comes up with these numbers, they're not comparing apples and apples. They're comparing definitely comparing apples and oranges. For example, and, and I and I started to come to this understanding when I, I was I was here in the middle of doing a demonstration, you know, assuming that the the gap in numbers was a gap that was reflected a reflective of discrimination, and I say to myself one day, wait a minute, if men earn a dollar for each seventy six cents that women earn for the same work, why would anybody hire a man to do anything? And I couldn't answer the question. And then I thought, well, wait, wait a minute. It's a great question, actually. You know, sort of like, you know, I stumbled myself. And, but then I thought to myself, now, wait a minute. Maybe these male bosses are so discriminating against women that they don't value women enough, and they don't even see the, the importance of what women are producing. So I looked at the statistics about women who own their own business. They have no bosses to devalue them. And women who own their own businesses only earn 49% of what men who own own their own businesses earn. They earn less. They earn, they they earn less. No so, so in other words, having a boss is an advantage for a woman. So then I started to say, well, maybe there's a difference in goals between men and women. And sure enough, then I began to get on the right track. When you ask women who own their own businesses what their primary motivation is, way down the list is money. Only 29% say money is their primary motivation. Men, 76% say Men, money is their primary motivation. So I began to see that when women own their own businesses and when women do work, they're balancing their chores with the family with their chores in the workplace. The women who own their own businesses say, I want to be home, I want to be my own boss, I want to have flexibility uh, with the family. And men who own their own businesses say, if I have children, then I want to be earning more money. If I don't have children, I want to be home. So that gave me another thought. I said, well, wait a minute. Maybe I should look at the difference between people who have children and people who don't. So I looked at never married women who have no, never had children and compared them to never married men who had never had children and found out that never married women who never had children earn 117% of what never married men who never have children earn. In other words, when you take the children, the motivation for men to earn money out of the picture, men earn less in the workplace than women do. Which, and children are also the motivation for women to, to, to stay home. Exactly. So you have, and so when you have never married women who have never had children, you find those women are making decisions a lot more like men. Never married men who have never had children, they're making decisions a lot more like women. So it's the decisions we make in the workplace that lead to the incomes we get, we get from the workplace. They're making decisions, women who've never had children are making decisions more like men, but they're, they're making more. Then, why, why is that? Why are they making 116% of what men make? It, it appears that there's a number of things happening. One is that, let's say you're an engineer. And do we need legislation to, to address to, to this? To correct that. Well, yes. well, we may need legislation to help men earn equal to women when they're making the same decisions. I mean, that's a possibility. The Paycheck, Paycheck Fairness Act may end up helping many men. I mean, there's many men that are... So, for example, you asked the question about uh, why would a woman be earning more? Yes. So, let's say you have in, in engineers almost all forms, almost all female engineers earn more at the beginning than males do at the beginning of their career. Um, if you're an engineering firm and you're, you have mostly males 
and a woman comes to apply for you, the chances are fairly good that a lot of engineering firms are competing for her. So you, and, and if you're sued for sex gender discrimination, you're going to be a lot better off having a fair number of women that you've hired than you are if you have no women that you've hired. And so both affirmative action and protection against lawsuits leads many companies to giving a special advantage to women and therefore high, um, paying them more at the beginning. So it's an artificial boost. It's an artificial boost, exactly. So men and women want different things from work is the bottom line. Yes, exactly. And well, they want different things. That actually, we all want the same thing from work and from life. We all want fulfillment. We want fulfilling jobs. We want meaning. We want a sense of balance. We want to be connected with people and family. But when men and women have children, they start dividing labor and getting those things for their family different, differently. So when they have children, the, the women say, okay, I have, to, I have to be more at home and I have to do a balancing act. You know, we, we used to say, in political campaigns, is the economy stupid? Well, if you were to summarize why men are in war in one little sentence, it's, it's the family stupid. I have to say this is also wonderfully obvious and intuitive. Yes, yes. Um, what is the effect of, of Congress getting involved? For instance, Mrs. Clinton, Senator Clinton, as we said at the outset, uh, has reintroduced legislation uh, to force employers to pay mm -hmm. the sexes the same. Is that a good idea, a bad idea? What do you think of that? Well, it's, it would be a good idea. First of all, it's a bad idea, basically. <laughs> I mean, whatever you're... Because it, it misses so much in terms of supply and demand. So, for example, if you're saying we should pay male models the same as female models, uh, well, we'd have to... Uh, take the pay of male models and increase them by 500 percent because female models get about five times what or male porn models stars. get. And I, porn I stars. male <laughs> porn stars. I read <laughs> National <laughs> Review this week stuff. make like one-third of female porn stars and, and that's fair. Yes, yes. I mean because of, su of supply and demand. Who wants so, to see a naked man? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> and if you had somebody like me, if somebody said, Warren Farrell's been working in uh, gender issues for 30 years, therefore you must pay him as much as Gloria Steinem, well the effect would be that nobody would hire Warren Farrell because nobody cares about Warren Farrell speaking versus Gloria Steinem. So when you so you have to look at the, the, the degree to which people um, want something. Um, a garbage collector, we're going to pay a garbage collector more than somebody who's working at Walmart selling clothing because we need our garbage picked up more than we need somebody to sell us clothing at Walmarts. And so the supply and demand leads to different outcomes that comparable worth and equal pay being forced upon people does not account for. Warren Farrell, thank you, thank you very it's been, much. It's been a real pleasure. Me too. Thank Thanks. You.